Rub up your engines. Ted Turner says, Scotty, what do you think about putting tire dressing on my tires to make them last longer? Don't. <laughs> Well, it really won't make them last longer anyways, but that's basically silicone stuff. It's almost always a silicone-based shine, and silicone is kind of slippery, and if you corner hard, and you get on the edge of the tread, and you got some of that on there, it's going to slide. I did that on a motorcycle once when I was a foolish young kid, and I almost killed myself, and I realized I'm not going to clean these tires. On motorcycle tires, you can clean them with water and a scrub brush to get mud off of them if you went through mud, and then dry it and leave it at that. You want the bare rubber on the road. The dressing doesn't help anyways because of course it's going to crack in between the treads too. It's going to crack all over the place. So it's not something that you want to uh, mess around with on tires. Guys do it. They think they look shiny and stuff, but it really, you know, it doesn't serve any purpose. If you want to clean them, hey, clean them with soap and water and then polish them off. And when you do see cracks in your tires, get new ones. It's a structural thing. It's not a superficial thing. Patricia Galeno says, Scotty, I have an 08 Honda Pilot that burns a quarter of a gallon of oil in between changes. What can I do to fix it? It only has 87,000 miles. You want to do the obvious thing is change the PCV valve. Pray that that's bad because if they stick open, then they can suck oil in. It's like a $10 part. So try that first. Now, if that doesn't fix it, then it means your engine's just worn. And that's the case, you just live with it. Because to rebuild the engine, it would either mean the valve seals are bad or the piston rings are worn. And any of those things cost thousands and thousands of dollars to rebuild the engine. So try the PCV valve first. You might try a higher grade of oil too. I had a customer like that once and I told him, use Castro GTX. It's really good oil. I've been using it in my cars my whole life. And they did, and then it went down and used a lot less oil. So you can always try something like that too. Something random asks Scotty, what's your opinion on a 2007 to 2014 Cadillac Escalade? Okay, they're endless money pits. Customers with them as they aged, everything was breaking electronically. Some of them, the transmissions went out and a lot of them started burning engine oil as they got older. The quality of Cadillac is long gone. In my, father, my grandfather's days, you know, in the 1940s and 50s and early 60s, they were just just bulletproof vehicles that run forever, but not anymore. I, I wouldn't buy a new one. And now, if you could get a used one dirt cheap and you're using it kind of as a toy on the weekends and it runs good now, you get it cheap, eh, maybe go ahead. But in the long run, they're not that great vehicles. You're not going to get your money's worth out of them. Mike Gordon says, Scotty, got an 04 Mustang with PO171. PO173, is it a vacuum leak? Most likely. When they run lean, a lot of times it's a vacuum leak. So watch my video, Finding Engine Vacuum Leaks with a Cigar, shows you, you can blow smoke in, find where it's coming out. Do check that. It's the most common thing. But there's a lot of things that you can uh, get uh, running lean. If your math sensor is dirty, it can run lean. If your fuel pump is weak, it doesn't pump enough volume fuel, and the car runs lean. There's a lot of things that can make a car run lean, but vacuum leaks are the easiest thing to check and the most common on a vehicle like that that's, what, 15 years old. Rubber hoses crack, gaskets that leak, so you want to check that first. Rubolo says, Scotty, what do you think about a 2006 to 12 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS or GT? I'm not a Mitsubishi fan, but if you're getting one of those with a standard transmission and you take care of them and change the oil regularly, they can be good, fun, and zippy little cars. That said, don't ever buy one with an automatic transmission. They're absolute piles of junk. And the advantage of if you buy a used one of those is, yeah, the Toyotas are going to outlast them a lot, but the Toyotas always go for a lot more money even used. And if you can find one of those at a decent price with a standard transmission, hey, you can get your money's worth out of it. I've had customers buy those things used for a couple of grand and drive them for sometimes six, eight years more. Hey, they're making out like gangbusters that way. Nathaniel's vlog says, I have a Ford Fusion SC and the wipers randomly come on by themselves. Why? Kind of a design flaw of that. And most of the time, if you replace the wiper motor assembly, the wiper motor assembly, and you can get them remanufactured, motor and the circuit board, what happens is the circuit board on those things starts to go bad. And then if you hit a bumper stuff, it turns itself on and then later turns itself off. It's a very common problem with those. Now, I've seen guys that are very electronically savvy and they'll actually remove the motor and the circuit board and they'll check it with circuit tester and they'll resize are some of the connectors, like the ground connectors that often go bad. Maybe you can take it apart and try to fix it yourself. Most of the time when I get those, I just put it in a remanufactured unit because the ones I buy generally come with a four year warranty. So once you put it in, you don't have to think about it for years and years. 
So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.